Welcome to this video on the topic of Year 7 Statistical Mathematics. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can convert some numerical statistical data as demonstrated in the table over here into beautiful figures as shown down here and down here. Now the two figures we're going to learn how to create in this video is firstly the humble histogram and secondly the beautiful scatter plot. To begin, we're going to start off with the humble histogram. Now to create a histogram, we first need to grab some data. The data I'm going to choose is from the grab reaction time column. I'm going to use the main data. To select the data, I click on the top data cell and I hold down my left mouse key. I then drag downward over the data until I've selected it all. After which I move across to insert and I move my cursor over here to where all the graph figures are. I'm going to go for a histogram, so I grab this one. Moving down, I get this one here. I click on it, and now I have a reference histogram. Now the next step is I want to format it so it looks something similar to this. To do this, I first need to go across to the green cross, I click on it, and I'm going to add axis titles. Now we know with our column charts, the vertical axis is always the frequency and the horizontal is going to be our data. In this case, our data is our reaction time. The reaction time, um, the reaction time units are in milliseconds. All right, that's cool. Now the final part is we need to label this graph. In this case, it's our grab reaction time because it's from the grab reaction experiment. All right. So this looks okay. Now the next step is we want to make it so that our data looks as fine as it is down here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars. Over here we have three. So I'm going to show you how to split these bars up. To do this, we go down on this axis here, the horizontal. We right click and we go to format axis. This will bring up a menu on the right. It might not take you to this specific run. Rather, you could end up here here or anywhere really. If that's the case, you just click on these three bars. From there, you click on axis options and it will drop down the menu. We're now interested in bin width and number of bins. So you can go either way. You could say we want 10 bins and that'll split the data into 10 bins. Or you can say something like I want to see 10 milliseconds across and that will split as many bins as we need to fit all the data. So what we've been able to do here is how we can create a histogram from this data shown over here. All right, next step is we're going to have a look at how we can do a scatter plot. The scatter plot is different to a histogram in that we need two data sets to, to compare to one another. The data sets we're going to use are the click reaction main and the grab reaction main. To select the data, I select the main like I did before. Now in the next step, I now have to hold down the control key and I click down and hold down, and drag over the next lot of data. It should look like this. Creating the graph, I go to insert and then I go across to this box here. This will allow me to do a scatter plot. I then select this guy. We've now got our reference scatter plot. The next step is to format. To format, I go to the green cross and I click on axis titles and then I'm going to click on legend. You'll understand why we do legend in a bit. All right, now the next step is I want to label these axes. Now I'm a little bit unsure whether the click reaction went on the vertical or whether it went on the horizontal. To find out what I'm going to do is I left click on the data over here and then I right click and go to select data. I then go into edit and I look at what this corresponds to. So this is my series X values, or in other words, it's the values that go across the horizontal here. What I can see is that when I click on it, it's highlighting these cells. So these data or these data points over here are going across like that. So what that tells me is that the click reaction should go on this axis here. And similarly, the grab reaction will go on the vertical.
And then finally, I'm going to label the graph. In this case, it's going to be click reaction versus grab reaction. All right, moving on, we want to format the data. So it's going to take up the visible part of the graph. So you can see over here, there's lots of white space. Over here, there's white space. Down here, was. Down here, we've got white space. We don't want that. To fix it up, I'm going to click on the vertical axis, right click and go format axis. Now I'm going to modify the bounds such that we eliminate the white space. To begin, I'm going to get rid of this space below here. Changing this up, I can see that the data doesn't start till roughly at least 100. So I change zero to 100 here and then we'll go to 140. And what we can see is we've eliminated the white space. I don't have to change the maximum value because the data goes all the way to the top here. So that's all right. Next step is we'll do this for the horizontal. I right click, I look for how far across the data starts, roughly at about 100. And then on the right, the data ends just before 400. And thus, I've been able to position all of my data points in such a way that I can read them over the entire graph. There's no wasted white space. Okay, now the next part is, what I would like to do is I want to segregate the people with blue eyes from the people with brown eyes. To do this, I'm going to right click on the graph and go select data. From there, I'm going to go into series one and go to edit. I'm going to call this series blue because I'm going to have the people with blue eyes on it. Then from here, I'm going to delete this. Now to fill this up, I'm going to hold my control key on the keyboard. And then every time I see someone with blue eyes, I'm going to click on their main click reaction time. So here, 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 and finally here. Done. Now next step is I'm going to do it for the grab reaction. Here, 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 and here. Perfect. And what you can see is that I've got less data points on the graph, but I've got all the people with blue eyes. Now the next step is I want to put the people with non-blue eyes on there. So to do that, I go to add, then I'm going to call it not blue. Grabbing the values, I'm going to grab everyone with not blue eyes. So here, 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 and here. Then moving down, we're going to go here, 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 and here. Done. And thus, what you can see is we have a beautiful graph that's comparing the grab, grab reaction time and click reaction times of people with blue eyes, as shown in blue, with people with not blue eyes, as shown in orange. Now, a more advanced graph is you could make it such that we segregate the genders. Now, to finally communicate what this graph is showing here, we're going to change the title and we'll call it eye color. And thus, what we've been able to make is a beautiful graph that's comparing not only the grab and the click reaction times, but rather those with blue eyes and not blue eyes. In addition to this, we could also make a graph that does male and female. We simply follow the steps that we just went through. In conclusion, what we learned in this video was firstly, how we could create a histogram from our numerical data over here. After which, we had a look at how we could draw a scatter plot using two different data sets. Furthermore, we also had a look at how we could create a scatter plot where we're comparing two different statistical pieces of information, those being people with blue eyes to the reaction times of those people with not blue eyes.